What if the two largest countries in the Caribbean work together to protect and restore their own corals? Cuba and the Dominican Republic, which when combined are almost the size of the United Kingdom, are doing just that. A workshop coordinated by the Ocean Foundation and Seacor International in Bayaibe, Dominican Republic, brought together Cuban and Dominican coral scientists to advance a new type of coral restoration that is increasing genetic diversity and the scale at which corals can be returned to the reef. It's a big Caribbean and it's a very linked Caribbean. Because of ocean currents, every country is relying on the other, right? We face the same problems. Climate change, sea level rise, over tourism, overfishing, water quality. It's all the same problems that all of the countries are facing together. And all of those countries don't have all of the solutions. So by working together, we share resources, we share experiences. And so when we can get these two countries that cover so much landmass, coral cover, we could really get a lot accomplished. By reducing wave energy by 97%, corals protect coastlines from storms and sea level rise, provide habitat for biodiversity, sustain fisheries, and attract tourists. Dr. Patricia Gonzalez is a coral scientist at the University of Havana's Center for Marine Research. Por demás, el, prácticamente el 98% del borde de la plataforma cubana está formada por arrecifes de coral. De manera que realmente eh, nos proveen de alimentos, nos proveen de muchos bienes y servicios a los que a veces ni siquiera nos fijamos o les damos la espalda, pero ellos están ahí día a día dándonos eh, todos esos bienes y servicios. Realmente existe una conectividad tanto genética, ecológica como oceanográfica muy grande entre Cuba y República Dominicana y por eso es tan importante realmente este proyecto. Incluso, por ejemplo, nosotros que trabajamos tanto en Jardines de la Reina, que queda al sur de Cuba, estamos relativamente muy cercanos de República Dominicana en, en términos de compartir regionalmente muchos de los procesos ecológicos que tienen lugar en los arrecifes. Entonces esta cooperación es fundamental precisamente para compartir éxitos, lecciones aprendidas, experiencias, etc. Meet Rita Sellares, Executive Director of the Dominican Foundation for Marine Studies, which is based in Bahia Ibe. Yo creo que lo más importante es integrar a los usuarios y a la misma comunidad, porque a veces la comunidad científica se comunica entre nosotros mismos pero no sabemos transmitir las cosas a la misma comunidad. Pero cuando tú le enseñas a un pescador, a alguien que tiene una compañía de embarcaciones, el valor de los arrecifes, y ellos entienden eso, se lo transmiten a los demás. Y ahí notas el cambio. Y eso es lo que hemos visto aquí en Valle Aida. Coral reefs desperately need our help. To ensure a future with healthy reefs, we need good management strategies to tackle local threats. But we also need to address the global threat of climate change by supporting corals in their recovery through active restoration measures. Seacore International is part of this collaborative effort, providing innovative technology for large-scale restoration. Seacore's approach of coral seeding, scientifically known as larval propagation, enhances genetic diversity and ensures scalability. Eric Bickel is Director of Technology and Implementation at Seacore International. As part of our implementation program, which is our program to train and build capacity within organizations to do larval propagation and to use the tools and methodologies that we've developed, um, Fundamar, the group here in Bayibe and in Dominican Republic, was the first group that we brought on board. And so they are an incredibly important group. They, uh, they are the most mature within our program and we've been working with them over the last few years to help them scale the work that they're doing in core restoration. Really what we're looking for are those groups that have those strong community connections and have built those bridges to the community and have that local context for doing the work. Yo creo que toda la comunidad es parte de Fundemar. La verdad que tenemos un muy buen equipo y lo que creo que vale más es que viene de Valle Ibe, viene de la misma comunidad y eso ayuda muchísimo a la conservación marina. O sea, tenemos eh, dentro del programa de biodiversidad marina, tenemos un programa de monitoreo de la salud arrecifal, que es como nuestro indicador de si las cosas van bien o mal. Y luego tenemos el programa de restauración de arrecifes, 
eh, donde trabajamos tanto la parte asexual con Acropora palmata y Cervicornis y la parte sexual eh, con siete especies. We need dedicated young people to be part of the effort. They act as multipliers. In Cuba and the Dominican Republic, there are many young scientists that are raising their hands to be part of the solution. They become the next generation of coral heroes and can spread the word in their communities to build the movement. Entonces, por eso, para mí, ellos son tan importantes, porque además ellos son el futuro. O sea, hasta donde ellos lleguen y los estudiantes que a su vez ellos sean capaces de formar, pues es lo que va a garantizar una comunidad científica marina estable para nuestro país y para toda la región. Katie Thompson is program manager at the Ocean Foundation. So I think it's like this magical hidden tool that conservation has um, that just the peer-to-peer -peer learning besides someone from outside coming in and parachuting in and telling them what to do. Um, they see it in practice from a peer community. With funding from the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund's ecological-based adaptation program, the Ocean Foundation and its partners are building capacity for young scientists to chart a future for the Caribbean's corals and the coastal communities that rely on them.